Okay, popular tools for our neonatal testing include screening with the auditory brainstem response, the ABR. So we're going to talk more about the ABR now. The disadvantages of this ABR are that it lacks the frequency specificity when a click is used. Um, we don't have hot norms on high-risk babies. And the ABR is not a true test of hearing. It's a test of the synchronous neural firings in response to acoustic stimuli, but it's really the best we can do for infants because it's objective. The infant doesn't need to be involved. So screening with an auditory brainstem response, you could combine testing with other tests such as acoustic reflexes or the otoacoustic emissions, which we'll also talk about in this, um, in this section. ABR is, a, is costly, but there's really no downside to using an ABR. It's a wonderful test. The screening machines can be used instead of a full ABR. They are less expensive and easier to use. They can be done by technician. So all infants can be screened with an ABR screener. And if they fail the screen, then they could go for a full diagnostic ABR, which we'll also talk about. It's important that the equipment is maintained and calibrated. So what an ABR is, it's a measure of the electrical responses of the brain evoked from an auditory stimulus or a clicking. So a series of clicks are presented to the infant or any subject at a constant rate by earphones and inserts, and the ABR is looking at the auditory brain stem and it's looking for auditory firing. So it's a test of the peripheral central brain stem. Electrodes are put on the baby. This does not hurt the baby at all. Insert earphones are put in the child's ear canal. It, there are 2,000 clicks at 33 clicks per second. So you hear click, 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 click. And what the audiologist is looking for is the fifth wave in response. And if you could do a click, 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 and find wave five at a level of 40 decibels, you're putting in a stimuli of 40 decibels, and you see wave five in both ears, that means the child has normal hearing. So you're looking for the auditory threshold in the frequency range of 1,000 to 4,000 hertz. You're looking carefully at wave five, the latency or the travel time, the intensity of that wave, the amplitude, and the absolute latency of the last wave five. The ABR, the closer the auditory stimulus is to the person's threshold, the longer the latency of the wave and the weaker the amplitude of the wave. With wave five, we can find general site of lesion information about hearing loss. So you're looking for the lowest level that you can find wave five, and that corresponds with the child's hearing. So another alternative to an ABR, the ABR is great, so test through the outer ear, the middle ear, the cochlea, to the first part of the auditory brainstem. Another option is screening with otoacoustic emissions. Otoacoustic emissions are less expensive than the ABR, but they only go up to the cochlea. If a child fails an OAE screen, you need to refer them for a full diagnostic ABR. It's assumed that children whose ears are produce, produce these evoked emissions have normal hearing or no worse than 35 dB hearing loss. So otoacoustic emissions are oto means ear, acoustic is sound, and emission is coming out, okay? So tones are sent in. The outer hair cells move up and down. They create some extra energy, which we measure as the emission. The disadvantage is any fluid or movement is gonna affect the test. So fluid of the middle ear will prevent getting an accurate test of the cochlea. OE test, OAEs test the function of the outer hair cells of the cochlea. If the cochlea is normal and there is a lesion existing retrocochlear, the OAEs will come out normal. So this is the problem. They only test up to the cochlea. So we don't know if the auditory brainstem is healthy or not. But they're faster than a full ABR and they're cost effective. After the infant is screened, we have early intervention. There are three components for our early intervention. Birth admission of a hearing screening follow-up diagnostic evaluation for infants that fail, and intervention by six months. So it's one, three, six. Every infant um, screened for hearing loss by one month, a full diagnose, diagnosis by three months, and treatment by six months. 
Children are referred to the audiologist for the following reasons. The number one reason, well, failure of a neonatal hearing screening, parental or pediatrician auditory responsiveness of delayed speech, so concern by a parent or a pediatrician, and the failure of the hearing screen. Then they'll go for a full auditory evaluation. And the most common reason that audiologists see children are to rule out hearing loss as a cause of language delay or repeated ear infections, otitis media.